today's Cowboys report is made possible by our good friends over at Roan. We've told you about them before, and we'll keep telling you about them. 20% off your order on polos and more when you go to roan.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports. On today's show, we're talking another UFL workout for the Dallas Cowboys. Adam Schefter on the Cowboys contract statuses for players like CeeDee Lamb and more. And because I've already seen questions on it, the idea of bringing in Denzel Mims, who is once again available after being cut by the Steelers. We're doing another comments challenge this month. The previous high was 124. Whoever comments the most on today's show and or whoever comments at least 124 times will get a shout out on a future Cowboys video. Let's go to the news first, the Jonathan Garvin workout development. The Cowboys, per ESP, or for NFL Networks, excuse me, Tom Pelissero, reports the Cowboys are working out the UFL pass rusher. That is Jonathan Garvin, who played this past year for the Birmingham Stallions, as Pelissero and Aaron Wilson are the UFL guys. They're getting every single scoop on the signings, etc. Garvin was a seventh-round pick out of Miami in the 2020 NFL Draft. He spent three seasons with the Green Bay Packers, playing several games, by the way, and then was out of the NFL for 2023 and signed on this past spring with the Birmingham Stallions. Now, Garvin only had three and a half sacks this past year, which isn't a very great number. However, he had a 14.4% pressure rate. That's a really good figure, acknowledging, of course, it is a very different level of competition that you're facing off against in the UFL versus the NFL. In many ways, it's the preseason studs versus in, in the UFL versus, you know, Lane Johnson, etc. Garvin did play 38 games in his time with the Green Bay Packers out of, Miami, out of Miami, Florida. He is still very young, by the way. He's not even 25 years old yet. He's, he's, a, he's a spring chicken, if you will. He had a, a sack and a half, two pass breakups, but a pretty poor 9% pressure rate. That 5% difference is sizable in terms of your 9%, man, you're, you're, you're not getting home very often. 14%, you're pretty darn good. So prediction time. Will Jonathan Garvin become the third Cow uh, UFL player to sign with the Dallas Cowboys? It is the pinned comment on this video. If that ad comes, great. Ignore the ad. Nobody cares. Go vote instead. Y or N. I don't think it'd be a surprise. You know, the Cowboys clearly have some semblance of interest here, right? They signed a linebacker. They signed a corner. Teams don't normally like to waste their time with workouts. They only work out players they have interest in. So clearly there's interest between Garvin and the Cowboys. Also, Garvin, you know, wouldn't do this if he was going to sign somewhere else no matter what. The Cowboys have open roster spots, and Garvin could find his way to carving one out. He is young. He's going to be in his age 25 season this year. Later in July, he, he turns that age. And despite you know being a multi-year NFL player, he's still very young. The Cowboys could use some more competition at edge rusher. The reason why I mention that is think about this scenario. Byron Vaughns and Tyrus Sweet, they actually get more work at Sam linebacker. Possible, at least in the case of, of Vaughns in particular. Chauncey Golston and or Junior Fehoko, well, they're going to get some work at defensive tackle because the Cowboys are so damned thin there. They have to try something since they apparently don't want to sign anybody at that spot. That leaves Micah Parsons, Tank Lawrence, Sam Williams, Marshawn Nealon, and Darrell Johnson as your only pure edge rushers. Most teams carry more than five. Now, maybe Golston and Fehoko and Wheat and Vaughns don't you know, work elsewhere and they actually are edges. I think there's room to add another one. Plus, you got the open roster spots. Uh, today's show is made possible by Roan. As it gets hotter and hotter, you want to wear something that's not only comfortable, but also looks good. And Roan delivers in every way for that. They have products for every occasion. The most comfortable pants, dress shirts, maybe you're not wearing pants, but quarter zips, polos, blazers, shorts, they've got you covered. Four-way stretch fabric is breathable and flexible and, of course, works everywhere from your commute to work to golf to drinks, whatever. And the Gold Fusion anti-odor technology helps, at least for more wears between washes. I'd probably only do that at the office, and maybe I wouldn't go play 18 holes and then wear it again the next day. Uh, that's probably not the way you'd go about doing it. But you can skip the dry cleaner altogether. 
because it is machine washable. So the commuter collection can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to roan.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports. Save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you go to rhone.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports. Find your corner office comfort with Roan. The link will be in the comment section and in the description of today's show. Adam Schefter dropping some not great news on the C.D. Lamb contract situation. No progress, basically, is what we got here. Here's what Adam Schefter said on SportsCenter. The Dallas Cowboys are as far along with C.D. Lamb as they are with Micah Parsons and Dak Prescott, which is to say not very far along with any of these players right now. Schefter reporting that the Cowboys are not far along with Lamb and Micah and Dak is profoundly frustrating to me. There is no good reason to drag these out if you know what you want to do as an organization. Enough leaves have fallen. Hell, at wide receiver, the whole damn tree fell over. Steven, you gotta pick up the phone, man. You gotta call C.D. Lamb. At least for the Lamb contract, you need to get this done. There's no reason or excuse or justification to not pay C.D. Lamb. This deal must be done before training camp. I would argue to not have a Lamb deal done who's young, he's a top player at his position, he's a stud, he's gotten better every year, he's checked off every single box you could want. It would be organizational failure to not pay C.D. Lamb. Uh, waiting on Micah, fine. You know, he, 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 many teams wait to year four. You're not, you're not really impacting your year one cap space, so, so it's fine if you want to wait and do that you know, next February, next March. Don't drag it out until August, by the way, if you can avoid doing so. Although, maybe you'd save yourself some money. Maybe you can, maybe, I think Mike has made clear he wants to wait, so it's fine. You know, the DAC deal is whatever for me at this point. I don't, I am tired of having the, the conversation. It's, it's like politics. The two sides are stuck in on their, on their camps no matter what, and they accuse each other of doing the same thing that they're actually doing themselves. I, it, just, it just doesn't matter to me at that point. Do what you want to do. If you want to pay him, pay him now. If you don't want to pay him, you should have moved on. You failed either way. Of the big three contracts, right, Dak, Micah, Lamb, how many do you think the Cowboys will end up doing and signing this offseason? Zero, one, two, or three? Let me know in the comments section right now. If this is not at least one, you know, and I, I would be shocked if this happened, but if you got to September and you play your first game and CeeDee Lamb is on his fifth-year option, I don't know what you're doing as a franchise. I really don't. Like, this is on you to call him. That, that's how this works. There's no reason for the agent to make the call. It's up to the team to get the player back in camp. That, that's how this, you know, good versus evil battle, if you want to frame it that way, that, that's how it works. All right? It's going to be expensive. It's going to be between $32 million and maybe a bit above 35 Somewhere in that range. The, the leaves have fallen. I doubt the Bengals are going to pay Jamar Chase. If they do, and that, that pay him more than Jefferson, oh boy, we got an issue on our hands. Get it done. Look, the quarterback market is what it is. It's, it's expensive. You know, maybe you can, I feel, I feel like the Cowboys think their leverage is Dak wants to be a Cowboy and therefore he'll take less, but you keep kind of like playing that game and sometimes the player gets a little bit frustrated back at you and it, it can get a little ugly. I'm not saying that's the case. That's my concern there. You got to figure out something on that front. So whatever the decision is, you, you got money. You just, you just close that new, uh, the new, not roulette, the, um, not, not, not the casino, the, or whatever it was. You, the, the Cowboys just closed that, that new deal uh, for, for gambling angles. Like, just take care. Slot machine. Slot machine. That's what it was. Just get it done. Come on. Now, the Cowboys report is lagging behind a little bit in subs gained in June. Now, look, we're ahead of the other bigger channels, the other 100K channels, right? The Niners, Raiders, Sports. So we're doing fine there. I want more, and I want to catch the Giants. I want to catch the Bears, the Patriots. Help us out. Hit that sub button right now. Let's talk Denzel Mims. You know, several of you have asked me about potentially adding him to the Cowboys roster. We've had this conversation before, and I do think it's worth having it again to a certain extent. 
Mims, over the course of his NFL career, has caught 42 passes in 30 games. He has 676 yards. The production hasn't been great. In general, I am open to adding wide receiver help and depth and a veteran player. I don't know, however, who Denzel Mims is better in, better than at this point in his career. With the data we have, he's not better than Lamb. He's not better than Cooks. Shalen Tolbert's outplayed him so far. Kevontae Turpin offers you a lot more special teams value. Jalen Brooks, I am intrigued by. Maybe they're in the same bucket there. But then it's it, but then you got Ryan Flournoy and David Durden, Jalen Cropper. And at a certain point, you can't have eight different guys fighting for wide receiver five because it kind of limits your, your snap counts that can go around there. And Nims isn't a special teamer either. And that's a big deal when if you're not one of your top three receivers and you don't help on special teams, that's how you're not active. That's how you're not on a roster either. So I got some more thoughts on this, but would you sign Denzel Mims? One for yes or zero for no. In the past, I have had interest in adding Denzel Mims to the Cowboys roster, but now I'm just not nearly as interested. The next team he plays for is going to be four teams in a calendar year. 2020 second round pick, spent years with the Jets in June of last year, or sorry, July of last year, Traded from the, to the Lions. Got cut in August by the Lions. October this year was picked him up. They just cut him in June of this season. Four teams in a calendar year is a terrible track record. The list of people who have made it in the NFL after like year four with four teams in a calendar year like doesn't exist. It's not really a thing. So if they sign Denzel Mims, sure, it's fine. Maybe you can fix him. I don't think it's needed. I don't think it's going to drastically change anything on your roster. And frankly, it might be time to give up the hope for him. 